Last year, I made a video explaining something called the concealment percentage principle, which is essentially a calculation you can make in order to determine your available concealment space in the appendix position. Now, in this video, I wanna talk about how you can use this principle to make the most informed concealed carry gun purchase for you. Once you learn how to use your results from making these calculations for yourself, you'll be able to get started concealing for the first time or concealing a new gun for the first time, feeling even more informed and prepared to achieve concealment success. First, let me do a quick overview of this principle, how it works, and how you can do the math yourself. The concealment percentage principle says that if a gun exceeds 40% of your available concealment space, then you are much more likely to face concealment challenges. To elaborate further, anything below 40% of your available concealment space should be quite easy to conceal, even without previous knowledge concerning common concealment mechanics and principles. Once you start going beyond 50% of your available concealment space though, you will need to take considerable measures in order to reliably conceal the firearm. Considerable measures just meaning quality holster selection, solid holster foundation, uh, a knowledge of basic concealment mechanics, as well as having to probably dress around the gun. Now getting your personal concealment percentage requires one tool and two measurements. First, you'll need a measuring tape, which you will use to measure your hip to hip distance, as well as the overall height of your gun. If you don't physically have the gun that you want to make these measurements for, then I would highly suggest going to handgunhero.com and using the measurements they have posted there for that specific firearm. You'll want to add measurements for aftermarket parts you intend on adding, such as an optic or an extended magazine. If you do have physical access to the gun, then you can just use your tape measure to get the overall gun height including any aftermarket parts. Side note though, if Handgun Hero doesn't have the measurements for your gun, then I would be willing to bet that you will also have an extremely difficult time finding a quality holster for that gun, which kind of increases your overall concealment difficulty due to the fact that quality gear does in fact play a role in achieving good concealment. So now that you have your measurements, here is how you'll want to structure the equation in order to get your percentage. Start with your gun height measurement, and then divide your hip to hip measurement into the gun height measurement. This should give you a percentage. Based off of that percentage, you can determine your concealment difficulty with that specific firearm and the parts you included. A common question that I got the last time I talked about this was where and how do you measure your hip to hip distance? The goal of taking this measurement is to determine your available concealment space. So the hip to hip kind of serves as your parameters for appendix inside the waistband. With that said, most people should probably measure the innermost portion of their hip bones in conjunction with their navel. The only caveat I'll put here is that if you intend on deep concealing your firearm, meaning entirely below the waistband, then you'll want to measure more in line with where your belt would typically ride. The reason I'd recommend most everyone measure at their navel is because that's where most body types have the most concealment success. Carrying too low or too high on both extremely thin body types or considerably larger body types is not usually the best answer. If for some reason you already know exactly where you want to place your firearm, then you can measure from there. But keep in mind that this principle really only works for carrying between the 10 and two o'clock position. Okay, now that I have given an admittedly not so short overview of the concealment percentage principle and how to measure for it, I wanna go over how you can actually use this knowledge to your advantage. First, if you're in the market for your very first concealed carry gun, you would be greatly missing out on some extremely helpful information if you didn't calculate your concealment percentage for the guns that you're considering. As a beginner, it can be overwhelming to think about learning a new skill like shooting, but I've also noticed that a lot of people fail to consider the challenge that inevitably comes with learning how to carry a gun for the first time as well. And I say that not to intimidate or to discourage you, but to kind of help you by providing you with more realistic expectations, which is also what this percentage helps with as well, expectations. Learning how to carry a gun can be a challenge at first, but there are things that we can do to lessen that learning curve, just like there are things that we can do to lessen the learning curve for shooting fundamentals. You can learn about the basics of concealment mechanics, you can select a firearm that is a good balance between shootable and concealable, and you can make informed holster purchases, just to name a few. So say you're trying to decide between three different guns for concealed carry. You can calculate your concealment percentage with each one, and then shoot each one at a rental range, and now you can converge your experience shooting each gun with the likelihood of concealment success and considerably narrow down your search. 
Another way you can use this principle is for the sole purpose of managing your expectations as you embark on your concealment journey. Maybe you're like me and you're a smaller than average person. There may not be a gun out there that doesn't exceed 40% of your hip to hip distance, but at least you can know that going into your journey instead of getting frustrated and wondering why this process seems to be much more challenging for you than it seems to be for other people. And I know for me, it would have been both encouraging and validating had I known the level of challenge I was taking on by carrying larger guns as a smaller than average person. And because I know you're probably thinking it, isn't it just a given that small guns are easy to conceal and big guns are harder to conceal? Why do we even need to do math? <laughs> Yes, that's generally a given, although there are definitely some caveats to be made alongside that statement. Guns with shorter barrels, for example, can be more challenging for a lot of people to conceal because there may not be enough gun below the belt to prevent the top of the gun from tipping away from the body. Taking the time to determine your concealment percentage with any given gun just gives you more information to work with. Maybe you land somewhere right at 50%, now you know that you may be facing some challenges, but with some basic concealment knowledge, you should be able to get up and running just fine. Either way though, with more information, we can step into that process with a lot more confidence than maybe we otherwise would have. Hopefully this video is helpful for you and address some ideas you may not have considered before. Thanks for watching and consider sharing your experiences using this principle in the comments below.